Welcome to another TI Inspire CX tutorial. In this session, we will explore increasing and decreasing functions. This session was inspired by the daily weather forecaster on the morning news. The person reading the weather proudly announced that today is the autumn equinox, so from here on in, the nights will get longer and the days will be shorter. It appears the weather forecaster is somewhat confused with the meteorological terms equinox and solstice. It's not correct to say, from here on in, nights will get longer. In fact, for 50% of the year, nights get longer, and the other 50%, the nights get shorter. These transitions occur at the summer and winter solstice, not the autumn and spring equinox. The daylight hours graph is a decreasing function from late December through to mid-June, and then increasing for the other six months. Therefore, the graph of nighttime hours will be an increasing function from December to June, and decreasing for the other six months. To help us understand increasing and decreasing functions, let's have a look at a definition. A function f of x increases on an interval i if f of b is greater than f of a for all b greater than a, where a and b are elements of that interval. The notation can be a little daunting. Hmm. So let's see what all of this means. The interval refers to a region on the function, and that a and b are elements of this interval, that is, they are on it, such that b is greater than a. On our graph, b is to the right of a. Now that we have established the ground rules, the last part of the statement refers to the fact that for an increasing function, we maintain f of b greater than f of a. So f of b is higher on the y-axis than f of a. Here's an example of an increasing function. We can see that if we follow the rules provided, there are no points in our region whereby f of b will be less than f of a. In this second example, our function is not increasing for the entire interval, as we can find a region where f of a is greater than f of b, even though we have maintained b greater than a. We can approach increasing and decreasing functions from a calculus perspective. If we graph the derivative of our function, we can see that our original function is increasing when the gradient function is positive. And decreasing when the gradient is negative. Now let's try a sample question. In this question, we are required to show that f of x is an increasing function. We are not given an interval, so we will assume that it must be increasing for all real numbers. To do this, we can use calculus to find the derivative. As we started with a cubic function, our derivative is quadratic. We could graph the result to look for clues as to what to do next. We notice that the quadratic is always positive. We can show this algebraically. As the gradient function is always positive, then our original function is always increasing.
let's have a look at another question. This time we need to find the region for which our function is decreasing. Again, I'll use calculus. This time to determine when the gradient function is negative. So what about the endpoints? Do we include them or not include them? As we have been asked to determine the region for which the function is decreasing, we return to our original definition. The endpoints satisfy our definition, so therefore we include them in our answer. This second question highlights why our definition for increasing and decreasing functions does not rely on calculus. We often find that endpoints are not differentiable, so we need our definition to help make decisions about whether or not to include or not include these points. And that's all for this tutorial, a lesson on increasing and decreasing functions, and hopefully a better understanding of meteorological terms. Be sure to download the practice questions from the Texas Instruments Australia website to help revise the concepts covered. A link is provided in the description below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be kept up to date as we add more videos to this series. Thanks for watching.